Welcome back. Now, first off, let me set it straight. Placement of urinary catheters to address obstruction require, again, require anesthesia. It cannot and must not be done in an awake, conscious, and mobile animal. Why? First, the most obvious, the pain. If you have ever underwent general anesthesia for your own surgery, um, by protocol, they would catheterize you when you're unconscious already. But the removal of it, you get to experience that when you wake up from your surgery. And that is painful. I'll tell you that. It is painful. So just imagine when it is just being placed, right? The second, the urethral, um, second reason is that the urethral smooth muscle tends to spasm or tends to contract if you catheterize it in a conscious animal. This will not only fight your catheter from going in, but also cause future urethral strictures. Now, for those patients which need catheterization only for optimal bladder emptying, it can be done without anesthetic induction since the control on this urethral muscles is already dysfunctional and spasm, spasms of the urethral muscle tend to not occur and even if they do, not um, very mild, that it will not cause a future stricture. That is the first part of patient preparation. Anesthetize your animals if you are going to unblock them for uh, urinary catheterization. The process that I will be discussing today is for routine urinary catheterization before surgery. The UCATH placements for feline urethral obstruction is outlined in the previous reading assignment that I hope you have read. So, um, for these, uh, this patient, you will need another person to position the animal's body during the procedure, and it is done in lateral recumbency. You have to clip the prepucial, uh, prepucial area around um, here for males. You have to shave that area. And for cats, we're in the uh, um, penis would be around, well, the balls would be here. The penis would be here, very close to it. Uh, you need to clip the caudomedial aspects of the hind limbs as well. For the aseptic preparation, because we want it to be as aseptic as possible to prevent any ascending infection to the urinary bladder, you have to flush the inside of the prepuce or the vulva with a diluted betadine solution or a diluted chlorhexidine solution, which is this one right here in this image. The solution washes the inside of this area, and the solution is then let to flow out to remove the dirt and debris. You have to make sure to do it at least five times, flushing and then let the solution come out. Do it at least five times. For male dogs and cats, you would need to extrude the penis from the previous for cleaning and aseptic disinfection as well. You have to wipe the penis with a gauze moistened with the same solution that you used for flushing. It is, I don't need to say it, but do not use alcohol. This is a mucous membrane. It is usually inside the body. Alcohol will just desiccate the lining. So again, do not use it. Once you are sure that the site has been cleaned, clipped, and disinfected, you may now scrub and don your sterile gloves. Remember, you have another person doing this. All right? It's not you who's going to extrude the penis out of the previous. You need to be sterile when you're doing the catheterization itself. Now, if you expect the bladder to be empty, you may pre-measure the catheter to identify how far you need to push the catheter in until the tip reaches the bladder. So you can actually approximate how much of the catheter you need to put in. 
For dogs, you would need to use a long urinary catheter, either a silicone foley, if you need continuous urine drainage, or a simple red rubber catheter, if you just need to get a urine sample or to help drain the bladder. A feline urethra is relatively shorter and smaller than a canine urethra. That is why you use a Tomcat catheter. So, Doc, why is it called a Tomcat catheter? Is it only used for males? Well, strictly yes. Well, yeah. Male cats suffer from urinary obstruction more than female cats. For me, I've never seen a female cat which is uh, fully obstructed. I've seen a female cat straining, but not a fully obstructed one. So usually there is no need to catheterize female cats. And also it is very technically difficult. I think in my uh, veterinarian life of um, more than six years, I have only been able to see two cases of blocked female cats wherein um, catheterization was attempted and was successfully done. Usually in cases wherein a female cat is blocked, a cystocentesis is performed to relieve pressure within the bladder and to collect urine. If the x-ray and the ultrasound show urinary stones, it goes to surgery, so no need for catheterization of that. So how does the actual catheterization happen? Click on the next video to find out. See you guys.